All right, welcome to today's lesson on two-dimensional arrays. Um, if we remember from previous lessons, a one-dimensional array is when we're talking about a specific location in memory that houses a set of data. Well, sometimes data comes in a format that is two-dimensional. It doesn't work with just one set of data. For example, if we have a table, right, we're going to have rows and columns on that table. If we were looking for locations on a map, we'd have a latitude and longitude value. If we're looking at images on a screen, right, pixels come in rows and columns as well. So all that information would need to be stored in something that is two-dimensional. And we do that using a two-dimensional array. A two-dimensional array is basically an array of arrays. What I mean by that is that each element in the array is itself an, enti an entire array. So what does that mean? Let's look at an example here. I've got a single-dimensional array called x. Like This is what we've seen in previous arrays, right? I've got positions 0, 1, 2, 3. Each of those positions has a specific value. So that's one-dimensional arrays that we know. When we want to convert this into a two-dimensional array, I'm going to make each individual place now an entire array. So now at position 0 of my array, that itself stores a whole other array that has positions 0, 1, 2, and 3. Right? I then look at the first row column, which is kind of the second row here, right? So position 1 has a whole other array as well, and I keep on going through that. So I now end up with a table of a certain number of rows, and each one of those rows has a whole other set of arrays in it. If I was to take that data, let's put it into something that makes a little bit more sense here. So this is the same values, and I'm storing it in a two-dimensional array, but now those values have meaning, right? Um, they're going to represent marks on some sort of a test. I'm going to call this array grade table. If I want to access a specific piece of data in a two-dimensional array, I need to do so by talking about its row first and then its column. So if I was trying to figure out the mark at grade table 1, 3, I'm going to look at the row first. So this is row 0, this is row 1, and now I want to look at column 3. 0, 1, 2, 3. So I'm going to end up with the value of 92. Let's try another example. Grade table 0, 2. So again, row 0, row, or so I'm in row 0, column 0, column 1, column 2. I'm going to end up with a grade of 93. Another one here, we're going to look at grade table 3, 4. So we're at row 0, 1, 2, 3, column 0, 1, 2, 3. Uh-oh, we've hit column 4 here. This is invalid. So again, remember from when we did one-dimensional arrays, our positions of our arrays start at position 0 and go up from there. So even though I have four columns here, right, four values inside Mr. Burns's marks, I only have positions 0, 1, 2, and 3. There is no position 4, so I end up with an invalid location. I can set individual values in my table, right? Because clearly Mr. Burns should not be getting a 51. He should be getting a 98. So if we go position 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, I can change that mark to something else. I can also use data incrementation and decrementation, right? So grade table 3, 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. 0, 1, I can increase this by 1. Okay. So how do we actually go about creating this in code? Just like one-dimensional arrays, two-dimensional arrays are objects that need to be instantiated in three separate steps. First we have array declaration, then we have to allocate the memory that we're going to use for the data that we're going to store, and then we initialize the values. So let's look at declaration first. Again, the pattern is the same as what we saw in one-dimensional arrays, right? We have the data type followed by a symbol indicating we're working with an array, those square bra empty square brackets. But now we're using a two-dimensional array, so we add a second set of square brackets. We, in theory, could keep doing this for a three-dimensional and four-dimensional and so on by continuing to add on square brackets. And then the last thing here we have is our variable name. This code here is going to create a, a two-dimensional array of integers with a null value. The next step we have is allocating the memory. So how much memory do we have to set aside to store that set of integer values, or strings, or doubles, or whatever other data type we're going to work with? So we do this by saying my array equals new integer array. So this is, again, the data type that I'm working with. And then I set the number of rows whoops, and the number of columns that I'm going to have in my two-dimensional array. So this time, we initialize all the values to the default value. So for integers, that would be a 0. 
To give them an initial value though, other than zero, we can do that directly by saying like uh, my array at 0, 0 equals 12, my array at 0, 1 equals 13, my array at 0, 2, and so on. If I don't want to specifically hard code that in, I would have to use a nested loop to do that uh, in a better situation. So in a nested loop, the outer loop is going to represent the row that I'm currently on. Okay. Then for each row in my two-dimensional array, I'm going to cycle through every possible column. That's the inner loop. Okay. So I'd go row 0, column 0, and I would give it a value. Row 0, column 0, give it a value. Row 0, column 1, give it a value. Come back up, row 0, column 2. Until I get through all the columns in my particular row, then I go up to the second row. So row 1, row 1, column 0, row 1, column 1, row 1, column 2, and so on until I finish the end. A couple of things, just like with one-dimensional arrays, the length is a property of the array, it is not a method, right? So I access it without using the smooth brackets because it's not a method, it is a property. And the length of a two-dimensional array represents how many rows there are. If I want to know how many columns there are in a particular row, I need to do that by using my array at row, so I get an individual row and find the length of that array in the particular row. I can also um, use a short form okay, to do this using an initializer list, right? just like we did with a one-dimensional array. So in this case, I have a squiggly bracket to show that I have an initializer list, and each element in my array is itself another initializer list. So I have row 1 separated by a comma, row 2. Okay, This creates an array that has two rows, and then each row has three elements or three columns in it. If I want, I can uh, analyze or use an initializer list to create a specific row, so just one row at a time if I want to do that. Right? So here I've created an array, a uh, two-dimensional array of three rows and three columns. And for one of my, only one of my particular rows, so in this case row one, I'm going to make it a new array and I provide an initializer list. So I can do it that way as well, right? doing them one row at a time. It is also possible to have a two-dimensional array that has a different number of columns in each row. Okay, again, I can use an initializer list where I have uh, three elements in the first row, row zero, and only two elements in the second row, row one. Okay. To modify the contents of an array, we do it the same way we do with a 1D array, right? We just sort of say, the position we're working with, row, column, and then its new value. I can set it to a hard-coded value. I can set it to another location in a different array, or the same array for that matter. Um, or I can set it to a variable that evaluates to the same data type that is stored in my array. Finally, if we wanted to, to display contents in a nice two-dimensional table, we do the same sort of nested loop that we use to set our initial values. The only difference is, Instead of setting values here, I'm outputting the values. Notice that I'm doing this as a print statement, so my values are going to show up side by side by side by side by side. After I've finished all the elements in a particular row, I do a print line to move to the next row so that I can then put them all side by side by side by side again. Okay, That's it. That's all we have time for today. I'll see you in class tomorrow where we can practice what we've learned.